This will be a video of your entire competency assessment. So Casey is going to demonstrate. I'm going to talk about things as she goes through. Just understand when you walk in on the day for your competency, we're going to have you stand in front of the camera and we'll tell you that you have 30 minutes from the time you open your back table to the time you finish to complete all the tasks that are part of your competency assessment. Okay. So first thing, Casey would have done her medical hand wash and properly um, put on all of her OR attire. Okay. So first thing Casey's going to do is give herself room before she opens everything in her operating room. So she has created plenty of space around her back table. She's going to walk up to her um, oblong wrapped package, taking the tape off, making sure that the pack is centered in her back table. And then she's going to open the first flap away from her, second flap towards her. As she does this, she's assessing which side of the back table she needs to open first. So it's going to open to the left first. She's walking all the way to the end of the back table, making sure that she's not lifting up, but pulling straight out so that the ends of her wrapper don't flap up. She's backing away from the sterile field, not bending over and putting her face over, hands on her stomach, and she's going to make sure she's staying 12 to 18 inches away the entire time she walks around her back table. Come around to the second side, Again, pulling the second edge of the wrapper, again, pulling straight out and not up. And notice how she's bending at her knees, not at her waist, okay? Hands on her belly. At this point, she's going to go ahead and open her gown because this is the side of the back table that she has ended up on. So she has her dust cover on her gown. She's checking it for holes, checking the expiration date, making sure it's good before she opens it, okay? So again, this is something that you can just pull out because the gown is envelope wrapped. She's going to check her cover, holding it up to the light for holes. Looks like her wrapper is good. So again, remember, um, these have a lot of memory. So she's checking the gown, setting it down so that the first corner is sticking out towards her. So that when she opens it, the first flap will be away. She's placed the mayo in the center of the mayo stand towards the front edge, not in the very center of the mayo, okay? Towards the front edge. Now she's going to open the first flap away, tugging it a little bit. We do have a gown and gloving video for you guys as well to watch. Opening up the corners as they are in the wrapper, okay? Pulling them down a little bit just to take that memory out. Being careful as she opened that none of the other corner, corners flop back up. Look where she's standing at this point. A big mistake that students make is going in between their mayo stand and their back table, okay? So you can come around the outer edge, walk around the back, but you cannot walk in between your mayo stand and your back table, okay? The last corner should open towards you. Again, watching those sides to make sure they don't flop up, okay? That's how she opens her gown. So next, she will go towards her ring stand and her genesis stand, staying 12 to 18 inches away from her back table. So that first corner is facing toward you. Opening away, notice Casey's standing to the side of her ring stand. The next corner, yep, just grabbing each corner and going straight down. Make sure you're not going out towards your back table. Bending at the knees, not at the waist. Casey's gonna grab below the wrapper to move it 12 to 18 inches away from her back table. You can't have it right next to because they are not the exact same sterile level, okay? So Casey's checking her indicators on the end of her Genesis pan to make sure both of them turned from running through the autoclave. She's checked the hole in the top of the Genesis pan to make sure there is a filter there. Covering up the arrow on the first side, popping the pan. Covering up the arrow on the second side so it doesn't fly onto the back table and popping the handle to break that arrow. Again, she's going to use that rocking stance, tuck her fingers inside, not over the edge, and open it like a hot pot, making sure to not flip it over over the Genesis pan. Checking the filter on the lid to make sure it's sticking out at all the edges and all the holes in the lid are covered. She will take it out, making sure she doesn't have her back to the back table. She's not over her Genesis pan, checking the filter for holes. When she's done, she'll just place it underneath the ring stand. Okay, again, move this 12 to 18 inches at least away from your basin, okay? So once she's done with that, you have your gloves you need to open, your towels, and a suture.
Okay. I don't care what order you do them in. Casey's grabbed her towels. So sticking your finger underneath that first flap, the corner sticking out at you. So the first flap is opening away from you. Without going over the open edge of the wrapper, she's going to flap her corners around and make sure she's tucking those corners into her palm so they're not loose when she's throwing it. Okay. Grabbing that last edge, making sure all of her corners are secure and throwing it onto the back table without going over the sterile field. Backing away without putting her back to the area, sterile field, and checking her wrapper for holes. Okay. If there were holes in the towel wrapper, you would just get a whole new back table, so that's what you would tell us. Casey's grab suture next. So she's going to pop the suture, see which side it rests on, and crack and shoot it onto the sterile field without going over. She's staying that 12 to 18 inches away. She's not putting her back to any of the sterile items that are open and checking for holes. Next, Casey has her gloves. So you will have an under indicator glove. So that's her blue. You can see the wrapper has blue on it. Um, and it says uh, indicator glove. Okay. Let's see if I can get it here. There we go. And then she has her um, outer glove. So we did show you two different ways to open her gloves. Let's see, Casey's going to end up opening it on a flat surface, which I do think is the easier method for opening, making sure that the gloves do not shift and go over the edge of the wrapper, controlling her corners. As Casey's walking over, she's watching the gloves and making sure she doesn't put her back to the back table, making sure she doesn't go over the sterile field while she's opening and checking for holes. I don't know if you guys can see that. So Casey has checked to make sure that that's a one inch margin. She's saying she doesn't know if that's good. So when in doubt, throw it out. Casey's gonna go ahead and open another pair of under gloves while leaving those first pair where they are. She's going to open another pair and throw it on. You guys will have three chances during your competency assessment to get um, gloves on suture, okay, any of those things. So again, Casey has a cliffhanger here um, where the gloves are hanging over, but it's fine because they're not hanging down. Okay. Now Casey will open her outer gloves, the second pair of gloves onto the back table. So again, watching the corners when she's opening it, making sure her fingers aren't going in inside the package and making sure the gloves don't shift. She'll throw those onto her back table and then make sure she's not over the field while she's opening her wrapper, check for holes. All right, so everything is open for your competency assessment. So she is going to come over and do her full surgical scrub. So again, you do your three S's, you do your shields, your sleeves, and grab your scrub brush. For the sake of this video, we're not going to have Casey do the full scrub. We do have a whole video that has the um, surgical scrub in it. So at this point, we're just going to have Casey, um, she's just going to pretend to do a full scrub and she'll <laughs> wash off and come in wet. Okay. So your scrub should take three to five minutes. We will time you from the time you start scrubbing your fingers to the time you rinse. We'll turn the timer off when you're done rinsing. And then you'll walk into the OR gown and glove. Okay, so arms, fingers up, elbows out, grabbing the towel, making sure you're not dripping, not touching the gown, and not touching your glove wrapper. Casey's adjusting her towel how she wants it. Again, we have a video on gowning and gloving, but rotating her drying arm, making sure that her hand is completely covered the entire time, and making sure the towel is not hitting her scrubs, either around her belly or up on her arm. So when she's done, she can either hand the towel to a circulator, drop it on the floor, or if a garbage is close, she can throw it in the garbage. She's going to come in and grab her gown like a claw, again, making sure that she doesn't touch that glove wrapper, because if she does, that blue gown wrapper is then contaminated. Okay. So grabbing the gown so she can see the writing, opens like a book away from you. Sticking in her right arm first, watching to make sure she doesn't hit anything, placing her hand on her belly, Holding on, sticking the left arm in, and then your circulator will come up and tie you. 
Casey's watching her belly at this point to make sure she's not hitting the mayo stand with her gown or with that gown tie. So keeping a distance away, making sure her fingers stay out of the white cuff, making sure her cuffs don't go over the edge of the wrapper. Thumb down, fingers towards the elbow, grabbing the cuff on each side of the glove with her thumb and first finger, flipping it over, watching her spaghetti to make sure she doesn't get close to her gown, or sorry, her face, and then pulling the gown and the glove on. You guys will get there. <laughs> Again, grabbing the other glove, making sure her fingers are not in the white cuff, grabbing each side, pulling the glove on, pulling the gown, See, and the glove just slides right on at that point. So Casey's done. She will make sure not to grab her own trash. She's going to walk over to the sterile area, sterile field. She's pulling out the left side, handing me the right side, and your circulator is going to walk around you as the scrub. You do not turn, okay? At this point, Casey is going to ask her circulator to please take her trash off of Could her mayo. Could you take trash off the mayo and check that wrapper? Too? Yep, and we're going to make sure that we check our wrapper. If there is a hole in this gown wrapper, she is completely contaminated because that gown is no longer good anymore. So she would have to go and do a complete full scrub because that's also contaminated her scrub, okay? So make sure you wait till they check that before you approach the back table to put your second pair of yep. gloves on. So now Casey's going to found, find her second pair of gloves that she threw on her back table, put her second pair on, and then she's going to take her gown glove wrapper and place it underneath where she would have put her, um, is going to put her instrument basket out of her Genesis fan. Okay. All right, so we are going to grab our Genesis pan first to make sure that um, our instruments are good and we don't have to get another set. Because if we do only have one instrument set, we need to get that run right away, correct? So Casey's adjusting the basket how she wants it before she looks in. If she cannot see both of the indicators, one of them is flipped over. Um, she's going to reach in with one hand and turn it over to make sure that she can see the indicator and they're good, okay? So, make sure you don't take these and put them on your back table because we have to make sure that we check that filter on the bottom. Yep. So you'll just pick them up, check them if you can't already see them, leave them in the pan. She's making sure that she's not going over the edge. She's coming down from the top, not straight over the edge of the Genesis pan. She's keeping her body away from the Genesis pan because the outside is not sterile. Lifting straight up. She is holding it in the air, going towards her back table and she's going to ask her circulator to check the filter. Could you check that filter for me, please? And you're good. Perfect. So your circulator will tell you that your filter doesn't have any holes in it. She is setting the instrument basket on the side of the bed towards the patient's head, okay? So if you look at your back table, look at your patient on the bed, put the basket on the patient's head in. Since she's standing right there, she's going to go ahead and grab that top um, basin and place it in the opposite corner of the instrument basket. Okay. Next, Casey's going to start adjusting her gowns and gloves and towels. So uh, the whole point of setting up is to touch things once. So Casey has these in her hand. She's putting the get gloves on the bottom, towel on top, or sorry, gloves, gown, towel, gloves, gown, towel, and place them behind your instrument basket. Next, she's grabbing her mayo cover and her trash and two towels. Stick it in the corner so that's ready to go to Draper Mayo. She has four towels and her laparotomy drapes. She's going to go ahead and grab those and place them in her basin. She's pushing them down to make sure they don't fall out. She'll grab three towels to cover her back table and then the extra stack she is placing right next to her stack of gowns and gloves. Okay. So next thing you want to do is go ahead and drape your mayo stand. So Casey's opening it up. You have the arrows on your mayo cover that tell you where your right and left hand should go. She's going to place those in. Notice she's adjusting it on her back table over a sterile area. She is not walking over to her mayo stand and then adjusting her mayo cover. Okay, adjust it over your sterile area and have it ready. She sticks her fingers in. She's opening up her um, hands to make a wide open mouth there to stick the mayo in. Okay, she's sticking her foot on the mayo stand to keep it steady. She sticks the cover over the mayo 
If you need to go straight onto the mayo, don't come down from the top, otherwise the mayo cover gets stuck. And she's also, look how far back Casey's fingers are from the edge of the mayo cover. So you don't, that inside is no longer sterile, so you wanna keep your hands away. Casey's bellied up to the bar, so she has her belly there so that the mayo cover isn't falling down in front of her. So this is the belly up method for putting on a mayo cover, okay? You can also use the um, move to the side method here. So you would never take a mayo cover off yourself. So if it didn't work correctly, we would just, um, you'd ask your circulator to come take it off, okay? If Casey needed a new mayo cover, say it fell or something happened, we would open the new mayo cover to you. You would grab it, wait for us to check the wrapper, say it's good, okay? And now Casey's gonna use the side to side method for um, putting the mayo cover on. So again, same thing, adjust it over your back table. She's opening her fingers up wide, sticking it on, putting her foot below, and now she's going to go to one side. Notice she is going away from the back table. She doesn't wanna stand in between her back table and her mayo stand. So she'll go to the side away, and then she's going to pull the cover out with her left hand and just go back and forth from side to side with her right hand, pushing that mayo cover on. When she's all done with the mayo cover, she's going to ask her circulator to please adjust her mayo, mayo Could cover. Could you pull the back of that down for me, please? Yep. We just want to cover as much of the mayo as possible in the post back there, so you'll have your circulator adjust it. At this point, she can pull her mayo close to her back table because it is sterile all the way around. The first towel she's placing is the towel away from her back table, tucking it in with the mayo and the towels all at once, placing your second towel closest to the back table and tucking those edges in. You can either stand at the end of your mayo and put your towels on or you can go to the side. You can also turn the mayo, whatever method works for you, just make sure you're not going between your mayo and your back table. Next, Casey's putting her garbage can, garbage bag, trash bag <laughs> on her mayo, okay? And next she's going to place her towels down to create her working area. So your first towel is going to go all the way to the front corner closest to your mayo stand. Your second one right next to it, not overlapping too much because you wanna, you'll learn later, give yourself the biggest area here that you can. And then Casey is taking a towel to create a roll towel. So she's left it folded in half the long way, okay? She folds the corners in and then rolls it up, kind of pulling it tight as she goes to make a nice roll towel to put her ring of instruments on. Next, Casey's gonna go through her basin. So your, um, oh my gosh, suction tubing <laughs> and light handles and cautery are going to go at the back. She's going to take out all of her basins, her emesis basin, put it so that it kind of curves towards your big basin and you'll place your other two next to it with your pitcher. Your aseptal goes in your pitcher She's creating everything else here in the front working corner. So she set out her med cup. She separated her needle book. So the um, padded side of the needle book with the needle counter goes on the front uh, side of the mail and then the magnet side goes on the back table. She's adjusted her suture and put it in order. Um, what else? Set her marking pen there and her labels. She has her peanut sponges that need to be counted and her syringe and her um, cautery pad, okay? So at this point, you will say that you are ready and you are ready for your surgeon. If I had sponges like Ratex, laps, those kinds of things would be right over here as well. If your hospital happens to have a knife protector, we will put that up on the Mayo stand. Some facilities have those, some of them don't. Um, this pack happens to not have one. Sometimes they're purple, sometimes they're red, but it's a knife protector and we'll go ahead and put that right up on the Mayo as well. Okay, so your surgeon comes in, they may be wet, they may be dry, depending on if it's their first case of the day or not. Looks like Laura's coming in and she did a brushless scrub, so she may not need a towel to dry. If she did, I'm gonna go ahead and open that up, making sure I keep it away from my body. I've stepped away from the field. I'm gonna hold it on the short side so I don't get too close to her scrubs. I also wanna make sure I don't touch her hand because this towel is not impervious. She's gonna dry, I'm not gonna stand there and watch her. She knows how to do that. 
and I'm going to go ahead and get ready. At some point in this interaction, I need to make sure that I introduce myself to my surgeon. Dr. Stallings, I'm Casey Glassburner. I'm a surgical technology student at SCC. Nice to meet you, Casey. As I look at this gown, I want to make sure that the writing or the sticker is going to hit the person in the chest that's going to wear the gown, and I need to make sure I'm able to read it. I'm going to go ahead and open up that gown, making sure I hold it away from my gown and also up off of the floor. If it's an extra long gown, you may have to be higher than you'd like to be outside of a sterile zone to make sure that it doesn't hit the floor. You're going to take with your thumbs, cuff around to make sure that your hand is adequately cuffed. I don't want to have any fingers poking out the top of the gown as I approach my surgeon. Okay, so I give them good arm holes. I'm going to stop kind of right after I get above their elbows. I don't want to go all the way up around their neck. The circulator is going to come in, tie the back of the gown. As they're doing that, surgeon's hands come up. We're gonna grab the gown sleeve back here, not close to the white cuff because that's the weak link in the impervious portion of the gown. Pull down that sleeve so it hits them about halfway down the hand on the palm there. Then on their preference card, it's gonna tell you what their dominant hand is. So make sure that you read that before you scrub in. If not, you know, you could ask them if you're not sure. Assume right for most of our, sur our surgeons. So I grab the right glove. I'm gonna have the thumb towards her belly. I want to put my thumbs in and then put my fingers in, giving myself that nice cuff so that my hand is protected from her unsterile hand. I keep my elbows in, keep strong. She's going to come in, and I also want to follow that glove in so it's not going to snap them in the wrist. Okay, again, thumb towards their belly. This time, she's going to finger assist. Again, we're going to put that glove on, and then if she had a second pair of gloves, then we would do the same thing, and she would finger assist on both of those. Then we're going to tie the gown. Don't go reaching for the card. Ask them to hand it to you. Grab the card, pull the string off right away. They're going to spin in a circle and then tie the rest of that gown. Next, your surgeon is going to ask you, your surgeon will stand between you and the Mayo stand. Your surgeon is going to ask you to take the send rake that's in your instrument basket and place it on your Mayo stand. As Casey's going around, she's making sure that she's spinning and putting her back to me. We always pass back to back or front to front. And then I'm going to notice that, Casey, you have a hole in your left glove. I do. Okay. So Casey is either stepping far away from her um, sterile field, or she can ground herself with her right hand on her mayo stand and put her left hand away. Either way, whatever she's more comfortable with. She's going to call to her circulator. Um, we have Rick here circulating. Circulator, can you help me? I think I have a hole in my glove. Okay. So the circulator, um, at this point, it is the middle of the case, so she's also going to ask her circulator to put on exam gloves. So while Rick's putting on exam gloves, um, he's also going to grab something that she can set the rake on. You can either drop the rake on the floor, she can set the rake on something. For this purpose, while Rick gets on his exam gloves, Casey's just going to drop the rake on the floor. Okay? So she has two sets of gloves on. She's going to take off the first, pair, first glove because only uh, one hand is contaminated. While she does this, she's going to cuff her fingers, pull them in and pull the glove away as to not contaminate her clean hand. She's going to let the glove drop on the floor. She's going to check her glove and yes, Casey, do you have a hole in your second glove? I do. Okay. So then Casey's going to um, ask the circulator for gloves first. So we want to get our clean gloves first. Okay, so we keep our circulator's gloves clean. So Casey would have asked for, um, what do you wear? Can I get two sevens, please? Okay. And they would be open to us. And you would practice just like you did in that opening video that we watched before, where you're going to take, you're going to pull it out of the package and wait while they check that Good. wrapper. Okay. Remember that you can only use your clean hand. You can't grab that with your dirty hand. And also watch your back and your back table and all your surroundings that are happening there too. Okay, I would have put the first on there, grab the second. You know, and also my sterile person can be helping yep, me with so these things surgeon. too. Okay. All right. So once you've grabbed your gloves, so your circulator's gloves are still clean. Now they're going to touch your dirty glove, dirty glove, and help take it off. So notice how Casey's holding on to her um, gown with her clean hand. Rick has pulled off her dirty glove. Now she's going to direct her circulator to throw that glove away. And then they need to take their gloves off, glove to glove, skin to skin, and go wash their hands. So you're going to tell your circulator that. So Rick's taking them off glove to glove, skin to skin, and he's going to go wash his hands. And then Casey is going to have a sterile person help put her glove back on. So, can you help me, Laura? Yep. 
that's your left hand. So then another sterile person would help. <laughs> All right, at this point, after you get the surgeon regloved, we're going to send you to lunch. So I'm going to say, Casey, you look like you're hungry. I can hear your stomach growling. Why don't you go to lunch? So you're going to break out of your gown. So make sure you step away from the sterile field to break out of your gown. She's going to untie the front, pull on the sides to get that inside tie, arch your back to get that Velcro undone, and then she's going to undo the gown, take it off while rolling it up inside out to control all that contamination that's on the outside of the gown. She'll go ahead and throw that gown away, and then she needs to take her gloves off, glove to glove, skin to skin, and then she'll go wash her hands. So she would have gone to eat lunch, she would wash her hands then when she comes back from lunch, and then you're going to come in and ask your surgeon if they need anything. I'm back for lunch, can I help you with anything? Yes, I would like some sterile water please. Okay. So you will ask your circulator either for sterile water or sterile saline. I have sterile water for irrigation. It expires 6 of 2020. It is 500 mLs. Okay. All right, so make sure that you are looking at the jar um, as they're uh, pouring your fluids. Also, uh, make sure while they're pouring fluids, they're not going over. Can you're not going over the sterile field. You cannot pour fluids more than once. So once you have poured, you either need to finish or else Casey would have to open a new bottle. Okay. All right, then we're going to tell you while you were gone, we went below and I got dirty, so I need to get switched out here, okay? Okay, do you have another gown and gloves for afterwards? Yep, I do. Okay. So, Casey, you saw, just check to make sure that I had an extra pair of gown and gloves. She's going to put on exam gloves because I'm dirty. Next, you're going to ask your surgeon to step away from the sterile field, okay? Because they're going to have to take your gown off so that you can preserve your scrub. She's going to make sure she walks around me. She would have asked to um, have me untie my gown in the front. She doesn't want to reach up and untie my gown for me. She's going to untie my gown at the back, undo the Velcro, and start it over my shoulders. Then again, she's going to walk around me away from the back table, grab the corners from the front, and pull it off so the gown comes off inside out. This is what we call peeling out of a gown, so it's preserving my scrub. She's rolling the gown up inside out to protect from the dirty area. And now she's going to use the hook method to take my gloves off. So we use the hook method so she's not touching me so that I preserve my scrub. And then Casey, who is gonna gown and glove me. A sterile person that will be scrubbed in will help you get yeah. your gown and gloves on. Yeah. And then at the very end, oh, then um, you would tell your circulator to take off your gloves, glove to glove, skin to skin, and go wash their hands. And then at the very end, we're going to have, we'll just throw on a gown um, and then we'll have you guys demonstrate that you know how to tie up a surgeon um, when you're in the circulator role, okay? So how we tie up a surgeon, so your surgeon has it on, we make sure that we are only grabbing the very edge of the gown. So you're grabbing the corners um, to do the Velcro at the top, reaching in from the inside. This would normally be tied forward here. Reaching in for the inside ties to tie that, okay? That is the end of your competency assessment.